Hey everybody, I'm Mick from the Fraser History Museum, and I want to say thank you to everyone who is doing their part to help the community, even if that means being at home and maybe getting a little bored. Uh, while schools are out in our area, we here at the Fraser want to reach out to you with uh, some fun things to do, some activities, some lessons, some content, just some stories, things to entertain you. So we hope you enjoy this, and we hope to see you very soon. If you've ever been to the Fraser, perhaps you've been to camp or on a field trip, or you've just visited with your family, you probably know exactly where I am. I am in the Lewis and Clark Experience exhibit. This is one of the most fun exhibits and most popular we have here at the Fraser. I love it, and it's not just because it's a cool exhibit, but Lewis and Clark is a great story. It is such a fantastic epic. Thousands of miles and 860 something days of travel on foot and horseback and by canoe and boat. We're gonna talk a lot about boats today, so get ready for that. Now, Lewis and Clark were both from the Virginia area, but when they met up again to start this journey, it was right here where William Clark had been living. They had purchased lots and lots of stuff. All the things that they thought they might need to survive, also all of the things that they thought they might need to trade with the Native Americans who they would meet along the way. And along with them were the nine young men from Kentucky, huzzah, and York. Uh, all of these people, it, totaled the number of, there was a number of about 30 people in total, 30, the number came and went, 29, 30, 31, 32, who joined them for the journey. And off they went across the American continent towards the Pacific Ocean. They were looking for things. They were looking for a way to sail a boat all the way across America. Can't do it. They were looking for all sorts of scientific specimens. Found plenty of them. And they were also looking to interact with the Native Americans who were living out there. And there were plenty of those. Some they got along with, some they didn't. There were many times that the journey could have crumbled, but luckily for us, it did not, and we were able to learn and tell the story. What you're looking at is a reproduction of the keel boat that they took. It was a 55 foot long boat that they called the barge. And the barge was where they kept all of their stuff. In fact, most of the men didn't even ride in the boat. They spent most of their time walking on shore, pulling it, meaning they stood on the decks and had to push up the river, or Worst case scenario, they would take ropes like this and they would walk in the mud up the shore and pull the boat because it was loaded down with all of the things that they need. Remember, they were going against the current of the Missouri River, which was a ton of work. So they were pulling the boat in most cases. As they traveled to the Great Plains, they encountered all sorts of animals like the mosquitoes, like the prairie dog, which was, uh, there's a funny story about the prairie dog. They decided that they wanted to take something back to Thomas Jefferson alive. Remember, Thomas Jefferson was who sent them. And uh, most of the things they sent back were skins and bones and things that they could package and send. Because there was going to be a detachment party. A group of people was going to leave the expedition and go back. Those people wound up taking two Two living things. There was actually a pair of magpies, bird, but also a little prairie dog like this guy right here. Or I'll show you what one looks like on this video. Uh, prairie dogs numbered in the millions in the Great Plains and they decided, hey, it'd be super easy to catch one of these guys, right? No, it wasn't very easy. They tried all sorts of things. They tried to run around and catch them. Imagine like 30 guys running around a big open field trying to catch a bunch of prairie dogs. Totally silly. No luck. They tried to dig a hole down to their den and got completely exhausted. And finally, somebody was like, hey, there's a river. Let's pour some water down in there and flush them out and we'll grab them. So they did. And that prairie dog rode along with them all the way to their next winter stop. And after that, he was sent back to Thomas Jefferson. He lived with Thomas Jefferson at the White House. And I guess Monticello. I can't remember which one. And then he was given to a man named Charles Wilson Peel, who had a museum above the... National, where the Constitution Center is now, where they signed the Constitution in Philadelphia. And Charles Wilson Peel kept him until he died. And then the little prairie dog was taxidermied and on display in this museum. When Charles Wilson Peel died, his family sold the assets to none other than P.T. Barnum. And the little prairie dog was actually in P.T. Barnum's museum before he started the famous circus that we all know. There was another kind of boat that Lewis and Clark took. It was an experimental boat called the Iron Boat. This was Lewis's great idea. He decided what he was going to do was create a frame, an iron frame of a boat that would be super, super light and he could fold up in the bottom of the great big boat. 
because he knew at a certain point they weren't going to be able to take that boat any further. So he would cover this boat in animal skins after they assembled it and sail it the rest of the way. It was a brilliant idea and it sank to the bottom of the river. They just left it somewhere and treasure hunters have been trying to find it ever since. Okay, there's one more boat I wanna show you. This is the dugout canoe that we actually had a man here in town named Joe Autry. He's an awesome wood artist. You've seen his wood carved sculptures around town. He uses uh, dead trees and does incredible art. Um, this is a canoe that is modeled after one that Lewis and Clark learned to make from the Nez Perce Indians. They had been carving canoes after they had lost all of their boats, and the Nez Perce showed him how to make a dugout canoe where you actually cut a big log in half and then build a fire and let the fire do all of the work and carve out, and then you carve out the ashes and slowly you get the shape of a boat, right? It was the Nez Perce that they made the best friends with along the way. I can tell you more about that someday, but right now it's time for an activity. You all are going to make boats. challenge you can add on top of that is to see how much weight that boat can hold before it sinks because remember Lewis and Clark had to carry all sorts of stuff so maybe you can build a boat that can fit small enough to fit in your sink that can carry an extraordinary amount of weight if you do this we would love to hear about it we would love to see it so show us how it went tell us how it went you can get to us on our email education at frasermuseum.org uh, or link to Facebook, send your photos there, anything at all. Comment on this thread. However you want to get word to us, share it. Thank you for listening. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you make use of this. And until we can see you again in person, we'll see you again virtually very soon. Thank you very much.